got to meet one of my subscribers and I'm just going to say her name is Diane I'm not going to give you her whole name but I met Diane and her friend Deborah they were here in St. Louis attending a destiny getaway with Taconi and last Friday evening I got to go and have lunch with them at one of uh, a great restaurant that I like in St. Louis called the kitchen sink it's in downtown St. Louis and then we actually went down and I, I drove down and showed them where the arch grounds were. And it was about 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night. So it was very dark outside. I'd like to say thank you to Diane for contacting me to let me know that you were going to be in the St. Louis metropolitan area. And it was great meeting you and Deborah. And I can't wait to meet you again, maybe perhaps when I visit Atlanta or the Georgia area then we can hook up again, but it was just wonderful and I appreciate your time Hi, it's Steve with tea quilt and I'm outside today. So if I'm looking around it's because Certain things are happening outside got some children playing cars and things like that I wanted to come and do the answer to the question that was presented in the vlog and then I also want to do the drawing for the Stonehenge fabric fat quarter sets. I got three fat quarters and two sets so I'll have a drawing at the end of this video. I just want to first come and say what the changes are to my channel starting July. The first Sunday of July I will be posting the block requirements or the block motivation for the quilters patch. I'll also be posting any pictures that anybody send me who has participated in this block of the month or so along so if you want have any pictures you want me to add to the videos as I upload them please go to my Facebook and post the pictures there or you can email them to me privately at tquilts at tquilts.com and then on the third Sunday of the month I'll be uploading the paradox point block of the month or triangle of the month so that will take care of the first and third Sundays of the month. On the alternate Sundays of the month, I will now be doing more of a UFO and updating a UFO and the status of where I am with that UFO. I have quite a few projects and I have a lot of stuff that I need to get done for my quilt show that's at the end of September. So I want to try to get some things done. I have about 60 quilt tops that need to be quilted so I am very interested in trying to get as many of those completed as possible so I will be working on those on Sundays and I may not finish those UFOs because a lot of my UFOs are very detailed and going to take more than just a week or a few hours a week of me working on them so in, so in order to prevent me from showing you the same UFO week after week I will switch them around and you may see them rotate back around and I'm hoping that by the end of the year that I'll have at least 40 to 45 items completed for the year and I think I'm somewhere around 20 right now so that's my goal and then my Monday videos will probably end up being more of a show and tell unless I do something fantastic with the quilting on the quilt tops because I've kind of showed you some of the basic quilting things and I'm just trying to get these projects done so I'm not going to probably be doing a whole lot of intense quilting so I will do a show and tell of some of the items that I have worked on or completed during the week or month so we'll see how that goes now for the questions I have six pages of comments that was left on that video and or that was emailed to me so we'll just start at the top, which is actually the newest questions. We'll just go from there. First question is from Wanda Walden. She says, how did you get into longworm quilting and did you start off with pantos or free motion? I started out with free motion. I was using a longworm machine way before I purchased my own. I actually have three friends that have longworm machines. One was a Gamel, 
One was the 10 Lizzie Classic and then the 10 Lizzie 2. So I have used those three brands of machines prior to purchasing my own. And she goes on to say that she took a long arm certification class at a quilt shop that offers free motion and she was feeling discouraged. And I will say, when you first go to learn long arm machine quilting, that it is a lot you have to learn that's totally different from what we have been doing at home to quilt a quilt. And it's all a process. Just the loading process alone can be overwhelming and knowing which side to put right side up and which part of your backing and top goes on to which leader. Keep going back. Do not get discouraged. It all takes time and learning and the more you do it the easier it will get and then her final question is are you doing any row by row 2017 outings my intent is not to do any row by rows for 2017 if I should happen to go out of town and fall into a shop that has a row by row maybe I'll just pick up the pattern and not get the kit but my intent is not to purchase any row by rows until I complete some of the ones that I already have someone wanted to know what is your favorite quick and easy baby quilt and that person is Jane Duquette and my favorite easy quilt would just be to pick three main fabrics and cut them say into six and a half inch strips by the width of fabric and then just sew them back together in a pattern of either rotating the colors any kind of way you like and then another option would be to add a fourth one maybe cut an inch and a half strip that you can put in between either the three sets or between each strip set if you like and I like to make them where they're about 60 inches long. That's an easy quilt and you can also do the quilt as you go method with that if you don't have a long arm. The next question I think her name is is Karen K-A-R-I-N. Her question is what do you do with fat quarters and then I also had some people asking me what do I do with charm squares and jelly rolls so I'll answer all these questions at one time. So. Some of my favorite patterns to use with the jelly roll is the yellow brick road quilt pattern and I'll be inserting some pictures into this video after I get through with this topic just so you can see some of this. Um, Nomad is also a great pattern to use. My one of, another one of my favorites is turning 20. Turning 20 and the yellow brick road or actually just you just cut your fat quarters into various different shapes and you rearrange them and sew them back together. So I kind of like that. And then I make a lot of totes and bags with my fat quarters. I'm sorry, those were all fat quarter related. On the jelly roll, I like a pattern from the fat quarter shop that's called Jelly Roll Jam 2. It's actually one of my favorites and I use a lot of my scraps left over from bindings with that quilt top as well. Uh, a lot of my jelly roll type patterns actually I like are from Cozy Quilt Designs. They have quite a few patterns and two of my favorites are Simple Simon and the Long Tall Quilt. For its charms, I like the quilt that I just presented to you the previous week called Shimmering Shadow Boxes or the Shadow Boxes project that Benetex put out in that summer preview pack. I like Twist and Shout which I did also with the Benetech and I like the Charms book. I have a couple of books that are called Nickel Quilts by Pat Speth and then she has another book that's called More Nickel Quilts. So that's a great book to use for charms. Here's a book that I like to use for my jelly rolls called 40 Fabulous Quick Cut Quilts by Evelyn Sloppy. And then with fat quarters, you can basically make any quilt that you want. And so I like to use this book here that's called Quick and Easy Scrap Quilts, which is another one of my favorites. And I actually purchased this at Joann's. The problem with this book is that it is template based. And so I have to convert everything to rotary cutting, but it's no problem for me if I like the projects that are in there. I've made at least four or five different quilts out of that book. 
The next question is for Virginia, and she wants to know, do I have any favorite quilt patterns for batiks? Again, any of the yellow brick rows turning 20 is great. I also like doing string quilts with batiks, but I like to then take Say my 60 degree triangle ruler and make a quilt with it from there so I'll add a picture of that quilt Susie man wants to know what's the smallest size scrap that I keep 1.5 inch square or strip is normally what I keep sometimes I'll keep scraps that are smaller if they're pretty where I can put them into my strings but I have a whole lot of they have to be something that's really pretty that I want to keep in order for me to keep them. So if it's some of the stuff that I'm just putting on the back to get rid of it very quickly, then I don't. I have a little bag under my long arm area where I have a bag for fabric scraps and a bag for fabric batting. And so then I'll give those out to various organizations that collect that. When buying fabric, how much how much do you buy knowing that it's going into your fabric stash for future projects? And that kind of changes over time. Right now, I just tend to buy a half yard of fabric because I figure with a half yard of fabric, I can cut that into two fat quarters and I can basically make anything with a fat quarter. In the past, I used to buy a yard when I was working and when I was building my stash. And then a lot of times I will buy three yards if I wanted to put something on a border or if I thought it would make a great border for a string quilt. And the reason why I bought three yards is because I like cutting my borders on the lengthwise grain. So that way, if I made a bed size quilt, I had plenty of material to make a border with. Background fabrics, if I'm buying background fabrics knowing that I want it to be a one fabric only background quilt, I might buy say five or six yards because I just want to make sure that I have enough background fabric. And her last question from Susie is, is your group online? And I'm not sure which group she's talking about that's online. I'm assuming she's talking about maybe the So So Busy Quilting Guild where I showed the projects from our retreat. That group is not online, nor is my Scrap Quilting Club. That is not online. So I'm hoping that I'm answering all of your questions, Susie. Diana Wells wants to know, have you gotten the new Gamble Feet? And if you have, which is your favorite? Yes, I have purchased the new Gamble Feet system and I have installed the shank and I didn't do a video of that part, but I will do a video just following up with those particular feet. The only one that I have really used and for any period of time is the open toe foot. So right now the open toe foot is my favorite and it's because I can see where I'm going, especially when I'm backtracking. Janice wants to know where did I get my shirt and that's so funny Janice because I keep getting a comment here and there about having pretty hands which I don't necessarily agree but my shirt actually came from Kohl's and I purchased it this spring so somewhere around April March or April I purchased that shirt P alt says she was wondering how many quilting groups am I a part of and then also what is your favorite type of quilt to make? I am a member of a few guilds. I don't get into too many local guilds because I am a lecturer and teacher and I won't have time to devote to each of those guilds. So I just had to pick one guild. So I'm a member of the Flower Valley Quilting Guild and then I'm also a member of the Missouri State Quilting Guild. And then my small group that meets in each other's homes which is called the So So Busy Quilt Guild and then I have a long arm group that meets monthly. I'm a, I also coordinate the Scrap Quilting Club. And there is a fee to get into the Scrap Quilting Club. But that fee is used to pay for the location. And then I have door prizes and project incentives drawings. And then I also attend a cart making class every month. What is my favorite type of quilt to make? I would have to say anything that's a scrap quilt. Even if the pattern is not scrappy, I tend to make it scrappy. And then if you're asking me to drill down and say another type of pattern, then I would have to say string quilts would be my true love because I'm using many fabrics. 
as well as I don't necessarily have to keep them in straight lines or diagonal lines I can do so many other things with strings as I've shown you in some previous videos the other favorite pattern of mine would be just any stack and whack designs because I like how just playing with fabric repeats can change how something totally looks from J Mary last one she asked if I had any kind of quilt that I would like to do that ultimate quilt you want to make she says she has two a crumb quilt and a postage stamp quilt my ultimate quilt that I wanted to make was the Dear Jane quilt and I actually completed that. So currently right now, I don't have any of the ultimate I must do. I do have a few quilt tops that were ultimate, like I've done a hand applique project that I would like to get quilted. I just need to figure out if I wanna put borders on it because it's already super sized. I have another question where I forgot the name of the subscriber, but she asked if I made money off of YouTube's via the ads. The ads and the interactions with my subscribers is how we actually make money. So yes, I do make money off of the YouTube ads, but it takes a lot of views to actually make that money. So for a month, let's just put this in perspective. For a month, let's say I put up just my videos on Sunday and Mondays and we have four weeks, so that's eight videos. So I have to do some project to record that. So the time it takes, because it takes longer because I'm actually recording it, as well as the time that it takes for me to edit it, and then I have to add all of the appropriate YouTube things on it once the video is uploaded. So that takes a lot of time. My average YouTube revenue is about $115 to $25 a month. And I just started getting paid monthly. I started in April of 2016 where I started putting quilting videos on on a regular basis. Although I've been on YouTube since 2010, I was mostly just uploading line dancing videos. But in April, I decided to get really serious about the quilting side of, of the site, and I began putting up more videos. So if you take that into perspective, I'm not really making any money off of YouTube because I have to purchase products that I do product reviews on. I'm not affiliated with any company because I do not have enough subscribers. So everything is out of my own pocket. Now, with that being said, I just want to say that I'm not here at this time to make money to survive off of YouTube. I would like to have it so that I could have that as a, a backup, but also that's not my first goal. When I first started doing more quilting videos, it was because doing lectures, I had a lot of quilters asking me particular questions and they were repetitive questions. And I thought, what a great way to use YouTube is to answer some of the questions that I get answered when I'm presenting. So do I make money with the ads? Yes. Am I really making money? No. I'm actually operating at a loss on my YouTube channel. And that is the network that I put the most time into as well. Rita Williams wants to know, do I do any embroidery? And she didn't ask if it was hand or machine, so I'll just answer by both. I do very minimal hand embroidery. I'll do straight stitch, running stitch, back stitch daisy stitch french knots that kind of thing i am not an expert hand embroider i think it's very beautiful and i would love to do that but i'm one of those people that i have so many projects on the flip side i do machine embroidery and 99 percent of my quilt labels are made on my embroidery machine i do some other embroidery projects as well but embroidery is just sitting there watching something sew out so I tend not to put a lot of that on my YouTube channel but if you're interested in some embroidery projects just let me know and I'll see what I can do Sin Forest wants to know how and when I got into sewing I have a great aunt that was a sewer and she was making quilts when I was about five years old. So I grew up, I was the first in my family born in the St. Louis area, and she lives in Birmingham, Alabama. So I used to visit. So I did not see her on a regular basis, and she she passed away. She was actually a great aunt. So she passed away long before I even started sewing. 
So I got my first sewing machine in 1986 and I started sewing, making clothes because I thought quilting would be very difficult. I started quilting in 1994 when a, a fabric store used to be in St. Louis area called Sofro Fabrics. They were doing a free Christmas block of the month, giving you two patterns to do every month. And were you a sewist before quilting? So the answer to that is yes. And then she wants to know, she loves, she wants to know because she loves my color range, do you also have a design background? I do not have a design background. I actually have an accounting background with an emphasis in management. The next question is from Patrice and she wants to know Am I going to do how to make patterns for dresses, shirts, and etc.? And the answer to that right now is no. I have an interest in learning how to make patterns and how to make pattern adjustments, but I haven't done anything with that, and I'm not even sure if that's even available in the St. Louis area, but at some point, I may look into that. Jennifer Farsh has a great comment. It's not a question. She says that I'm working on my first scrappy quote, and I'm following your tutorials. I think I would like to change blocks row by row. Thank you for all the inspiration. And I think that's a great idea. We get so wrapped up into a block and making a quilt out of an entire block when you can do a row by row quilt and just change the blocks for the row. So if you want a quilt that's 64 inches wide, you just make blocks and say your blocks only equal, say 60 inches. And then you just add sashing between the blocks to make it fit. And if they don't have to be all equal sashing either, it's best if they're equal, but there is no police that say they all have to be the same equal sizes just make it work <laughs> Sheila Arizona she says do you quilt every day or several times a week I quilt every day and I also do something business related every day the fact that I'm on YouTube I have to record whatever it is that I'm working on. So I record about 95% of the projects that I do just so I have some options for uploading on YouTube. So it takes me a little longer to do things even though you all think that I do them pretty fast. And sometimes I am doing marathon sewing trying to get a video up. But yes, I do quilt every day for at least two to three hours every day as well. Some days I may quilt for eight to 12 hours. Jasmine Vania wants to know, when will you start the drawing and how should I enter? Great question, Jasmine. The drawing will be held right after this video segment and you are already entered into the drawing by commenting on this particular post. Nancy wants to know, how did you get started in quilting? I've already answered that. Diane French wants to know, how long I've been quilting too, so I've already answered that. But she also wants to know, do you keep your quilts or sell them? I keep my quilts. My quilts are mostly used for lectures and sometimes I rotate them in and out. So say I have a lecture on scrap quilts. If I came to your group five years ago, I can come back to your group again five years later because I change my quilts around so often. So you won't see a lot of repeats when I come in. I don't sell quilts because most people that do not quilt do not understand the monetary value of a quilt. They don't understand that a bed size quilt can cost over $200 in supplies. So therefore I do not sell my quilts because they only want to pay Walmart prices. I will make quilts that are commissioned if someone has a t-shirt quilt or you saw the basketball quilt. So I do those type of quilts for people but I do not go out and intentionally try to sell quilts. Kathy Hopkins also wanted to know how long I've been quilting. Teresa Allen, she wants to know what is the recommended seam allowance on the crazy quilt strips and crumbs and scraps. Now, you're, you should always be aiming for a quarter inch seam allowance. That's just good practice for quilting. So when, especially as a beginner, because you need to know what your accurate quarter inch seam is. Now, strings and crumb quilts are also great for beginners because if you mess that up, it doesn't really matter. So I would say the minimum seam allowance would be one eighth of an inch. 
that's going to be very tiny so I would recommend it it's a quilt that you're going to heavily quilt if your seams are small if you're the maximum I would say a half inch and that's all relative so just go for it with strings and crumbs Kelly wants to know about the design wall that's hanging on my room and someone else wanted to know about that as well she wants to know is it felt or batting and one other person wanted to know how was it made I actually use <laughs> got a car coming down the street but I actually used foam insulation the pink kind that you can get at your hardware store I just combined a couple of pieces and then I cut the height that I wanted from those two pieces and I attached it to my wall with screws and washers to make sure that the screws didn't pop out and then on my design wall I also added yo-yos to cover the hardware so if you ever see a full shot of my design wall and wonder why are there yo-yos that's what's hiding the hardware that's holding it onto the wall and I wanted it bolted to the wall so it would be able to handle the weight that I was going to put on it and I don't know if I said it or not but it is made the surface on it is actually batting I used warm and natural batting and I used duct tape to connect my insulation boards together And she wants me to wish her good luck on her first quilt. She's just starting, so good luck, Kelly, on your first quilt. If you have any questions about it, just pop them into any video in the comment section. I'll be more than willing to help you. Nettie, Dewey, she has a couple of questions. She wants to know, what did I use to make spray starch? I do have a video that's talk about all the different types of spray starch so I'm not sure which one she was actually asking about in the video but if you go to the YouTube channel and go to T Quilts and then go to T Quilts home page on there I have playlists so you can find things by that but you can also search and just put in starch and it will bring up any video where I talk about the actual starch that I'm using but I have a video that is only about all the different types of spray starches that I use her second question she wanted to know was how much was the AccuQuilt cutter? I have the studio cutter and let's see. I have the studio cutter and that studio cutter can run you anywhere between $600 and $700. I have not looked on AccuQuilt site. But when I purchase mine, I also purchase as many things as I can on sale. So I waited until around Christmas time where they were doing a lot of Christmas sales and you can get them for around $350 to $400. But do be aware that this is an expensive investment and make sure you know what you're going to use it for. Like when I first started I bought the two and a half inch strip die and I bought a few half square triangle dies. And then I found that I didn't use it and one of the main reasons was because the machine wasn't set up where it was out. It was actually put up and I had to always get it out. And the second reason is it was just easier for me to cut four or five binding strips with my two and a half inch die instead of pulling out all of that equipment. Once I started buying dies that were more complicated to cut like Drunkard's Path, the Tumbler, and kind of think double wedding ring then I was able to use it more and then I got more accustomed to using it now I'm getting into some of my more email questions I have Sonia Bracy who wants to know what type of sewing machine would I recommend for her and then one that she wouldn't have to replace if she wanted to later on get into free motion quilting and I'm just going to go back to the same things would apply that I used in my how, how to purchase a long arm quilting machine is to go to the various stores, see what types of machines they have available for sale, see how they work, see what the features are, talk with the salespeople, see how, you know, get to know them, let them contact you when they're having a sale or something like that. And the first time you go, you do not want to actually 
actually purchase a machine you're just out shopping and then you can go back and make a list of the things that you like about sewing once you've seen what these machines can do do you want a machine that has a needle up and down do you want a machine that has a thread a needle thread or do you want a machine that has a thread cutter do you want any decorative stitches are you interested in machine embroidery and so forth do you want a machine that already have your quilting foot your quarter inch foot your open toe foot your walking foot your free motion foot so ask these type of things because some machines you will have to purchase them over again because some machines you will have to purchase your actual feet for your machines they're not always just a given and I'm thinking Bernina is one of those and also do not let them sell you a machine that's not what you want if you're not looking for an embroidery machine then do not purchase an embroidery machine paulette wanted to know if it was too late to join the benner tax club i have no affiliation with benner tax this was just the vehicle that i chose to do a quilty box sort of as a reveal on youtube and i picked it because it was the cheapest and the fact that it only comes once a quarter and I did not want to spend $40 every month to do a quilty box reveal. This, when I signed up, it was only $35 for two years. So I'll get eight different packages from them. So that's what I signed up for. It's never too late to sign up for the Benertex Club. You can go to www.benertex.com and then look for Mr. B's Fabric Preview Club. And you will have to Print the form and then you will have to add your payment. There is no way for you to do the payment online. Virginia says that she has some fabric and clothing and tablecloths and things that we're giving to her and she's trying to figure out how to store it because it's just taking up so much space and she said that she was says do you think I should cut these into strips or squares or just leave them as they are until I decide how I'm going to use them this may sound like a silly question but I saw a video on organizing and the lady said to cut up your fabrics into smaller pieces I trust your judgment what do you think I have a lot of containers that have my favorite size already pre-cut so when I sometimes get a pattern that I see in a magazine or a book I don't necessarily have to cut anything because I have all my basic squares cut now if you want to make a particular pattern with that I would suggest you get that pattern and then cut your pieces into whatever those pad the pattern is calling for and then once you start cutting so say it's a jelly roll pattern then I will start cutting everything into two and a half inch strips you get rid of the hems you get rid of the zippers you get rid of the buttons and if you want to use any of that stuff you can save it and put it to the side if not then you can move it along so that it's not holding up your space and then what I do is I take that pattern even if it's in a book I'll go make a Xerox copy of it and I'll just put it with the fabric so therefore a couple years down the road you're not forgetting what it was you intended to do with those pre-cut pieces and I think that will also make you make a plan for what it is that you have as well so yes I would cut them into pieces and then I had a lot of people asking me about the blocks that I used in my solstice challenge, asking me the actual names of those blocks. I don't know the names of the actual blocks, but I did in the first video give you a link to purchase the Quilt Makers 100 Blocks Volume 2. It's only about six or seven dollars, so it's not very expensive. And then that way you'll have all the patterns and that magazine is well worth the fee. So I think that's it for this video. I think I've answered all the questions. I can't think of anything else that I was asked and I'm sure I probably have missed some because I tried to go back into my emails and pull everything. So if I forgot anything, just ask me a question down in the comment sections and I'll start saving another batch of questions to answer in the next video. So we're going to go inside now and we're going to do the raffle drawing so good luck to you so i am at the random comment picker and i am pasting in the ulr for the video
so when I go on to YouTube this is the video that has the comments that's eligible so I will click on it discover the signs of healthy and all I want to do is just copy the ULR and then go back to random comment picker and paste that ULR into this field and then when I hit load comments it pulls up over here the video that it's going to pick I've got a total of 27 comments on this particular video so I'm just going to click random comment picker and the first winner is Susie Mann So I got interrupted because my husband came home and the dog was barking. And so I just cut the camera off. But as I was saying before, Susie Mann won the first drawing. And she will get a set of the Stonehenge fabrics. And so I want to get another winner. So I'm going to just click load comments again and then randomly pick a winner and the second winner is Diana Wells so you too can contact me at tquilts at tquilts.com email me your snail mail address or your mailing address and I will get your prizes to you in the mail thanks everybody for participating and I'll see you in my next drawing bye bye mm -hmm.